Okay, in this video we're going to demonstrate booting from USB to create a Solaris VM. In order to boot from USB in VirtualBox you have to do a few things. So we're going to go through those steps. First and foremost you need to notice that both of these command windows are administrator. That's essential. In order for booting from USB to work you must start VirtualBox from a command window with administrator privileges. Going to the start menu using control shift and run as administrator does not work. I don't know why, but it doesn't. So here we're going to start VirtualBox. Not going to upgrade at this moment. Now we need to find the drive number for the USB stick. So I'm running disk management. We're going to scroll down until we see the disk is a SanDisk 16 gigabyte drive with USB 3. Uh, so here is the right size and then the image is approximately seven and a half gigabytes. So we're, we're looking at disk number six. We just need to remember the number six. Next, we need to use a command. It's V button. I'm pulling these commands from the instructions here at pendrive linux.com. We just found the disk number. Uh, we launched VirtualBox. Now we're going to cre create a, a file that redirects to the USB stick. So this is the command. And let me bring in a Explorer window. Here's the Explorer window, and you can see that this file USB Solaris VMDK is not there so I'm going to go ahead and let that one go now we have this one kilobyte file that effectively redirects to the USB drive now it's time to create a virtual machine you know build a Solaris 11 And I'm using USB 6 because this actually just happens to be the, the sixth version of the USB image. It has nothing to do with the physical drive. This is just the version number of the USB image. This machine has plenty of RAM, so I'm going to give it 4 gigs so it runs a little faster. We are going to create a virtual hard drive. I'm going to use the default type. We're going to use fixed size because otherwise it's very slow. I'm going to make it 24 gig just so we have enough space. We're going to decide where we're going to put that creating a directory and then we'll go ahead and create the file. This one actually happens to be on a solid state drive. There's a place where in VirtualBox where you can tell it that it's using a solid state drive. Don't do that. That consistently crashes. You do, if you just use it and don't tell it, it works fine. So now when it's going to have to create the 24 gigabyte file, it takes a little bit of time. Okay, now I'm going to customize from the default settings. Leave that alone. This is not necessary, but it's nice to have. 
drag and drop. I give it two CPUs. I leave the acceleration as is. The display I don't change. Storage, this is the one critical change you have to make. In order to boot from USB, you have to add a IDE controller. And for that controller, we're going to choose an existing disk to add. Don't care about serial ports, leave USB alone. It would be nice to share a folder, but I don't need it right now. All right. Now we're going to start this guy up. When we start it up, it gives us a choice. Now we get to pick SAMP stands for Solaris, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. And no SAMP stands for, well, doesn't have Apache on it essentially. Install we're going to do is DHCP. So I'm going to show this one. Okay, this is some shutdown. Now what we need to do is we need to remove this controller because otherwise it will try and boot from the USB again, which a real device would. We say okay. We start it. It's got one boot choice. We hit enter. And now we wait. We'll verify that Apache is up and running on this box. It's 192.168.2.114. We're up and good.